from that short break and first thing we come to do this morning on awake is this discuss human resource management now we know that if you're part of any company or corporate organization you know human resource is a very integral part of its organization structure now i have with me um a gentleman he's from the uh, he's executive director of the institute of hr management in ghana hr management practitioners and he's in the person of ebenisa agbeto good morning sir good morning I hope the rains are good thing. The rains didn't keep you away. No, it didn't. Um, obviously, I was concerned about the traffic. Obviously, yes. when it gets a bit hazy, yes, you know that that's the traffic true. can get a bit tight. But, yes, uh, but it's, it's a good thing when you see people on time on a rainy day because you know in Ghana, once a rainy day comes, everything is left up in the open. You are right. Not for me. Every day on time. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> of course, we are here to talk about human resource management, yes. and uh, you are part of the Institute of HR Management Practitioners in yeah. Ghana. Yes. Um, can you just tell us a bit about your organization as a whole? Okay. Um, the Institute of Human Resource Management Practitioners, uh, Ghana, mm -hmm. is an autonomous um, national professional body. Yes. Um, it was actually founded about 35 years ago. This mm -hmm. is 1978. Yes. And um, it was actually registered in 1981 as a professional body. Mm -hmm. um, its main mission was and still is to advance the human resource management pr practice in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, in pursuit of this, uh, the Institute seeks to achieve four main objectives. Uh, one, to formulate uh, professional standards mm -hmm. uh, to guide uh, the conduct of mm -hmm. professional HR practitioners in Ghana. Yes. Uh, secondly, um, it also provides a forum for continuing education and learning for HR practitioners in Ghana. Thirdly, it also provides a forum for um, continuing education for those who are in practice. Yes. And then last but not the least, um, they also provide opportunity and learning for those who aspire mm -hmm. to become HR practitioners. Yes. So these are the main four objectives that the Institute seeks to yes. achieve. And now we know with many modern organizations, HR, the HR department is an integral part of a function of a company. Yeah. But more, some employees are a bit, um, I guess some may not be as clear as to what HR management really is about, especially within a company. Mm -hmm. If you could just define that for us, the role of HR. Um, obviously, um, HR mainly in brief yes. is meant to manage the human resource of any organization. In every organization, we have all kinds of assets. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the equipment, etc. But trust me, it takes the human beings to make the other physical assets to come together mm -hmm. to provide the result mm -hmm. that the a company desires to achieve. Yes. So if you get managing the people right, then trust me, you are assured of success. Yes, and I think that <clears throat> I know every company wants to make um, the, their bottom line when it comes to just Absolutely. getting their bottom line done. But when it comes to managing people, even within smaller structures or even in your home, it's a difficult thing to do. So even within a bigger organization, you have so many people and so many personalities. But what exactly is the role of HR in managing workers in sense of are they the voice of the worker or the voice of management? How do they do that? Um, HR mainly is meant to ensure that the best out of the employees mm -hmm. are out to achieve the organization's goals. Mm -hmm. And as HR practitioner, your role specifically is to ensure that you optimize the talent of the employees within the organization. The truth of the matter is that um, traditionally people have taken this for granted mm -hmm. and as such um, certain organizations tend to, you know, uh, kind of keep a close eye to this particular, you know, aspect of the organization. But then, within the multinationals mm -hmm. or in the advanced countries, they know, and as a result, they have made it. In Ghana now, as we are now having a lot of multinationals in the country, mm -hmm. um, they are kind of opening up yes. this um, uh, what good uh, area where in the past we seem to have closed our eyes yes. to. So for you to get the bottom line, just mm -hmm. as you said, mm -hmm. then you must look at your people. 
uh, people. That will, they will make the difference. The difference. The and difference. it seems like as modern, more modern organizations spring up, like you said, also Western um, mm. organizations come in. That's we are right. learning a bit about how the standard, international best standard practice in HR management. But if you take a look at the old school way of HR management, we know that they used to be called personnel officers. Absolutely. And their work was not exactly gr that. It wasn't defined by much. Mm -hmm. If anything, they were limited to a few announcements here and there, making sure mm -hmm. information is, you know, ferried out. Mm -hmm. But how has their role changed over time from personnel management to now HR executives? Okay, um, just as you rightly said, um, traditionally the role had been termed as um, administration, mm -hmm. administration, mm -hmm. and that is mainly to do with transactional operational activities, routine, lead doing, uh, leave promotion, um, uh, salaries here and there. But really, as you handle people in that manner, mm -hmm. then you'll be losing out so much on something. And the, where you lose out is, the point is, then you are not placing emphasis on talent mm -hmm. of the employees. Yes. And this is where now the role has been defined as you are the advisor to the chief executive when it comes to managing people. Mm -hmm. Um, this means that every decision that is taken mm -hmm. by top management, HR, must be there to advise because every business decision that you take has human implication. Yes. And it is, takes the specialist to tell you which type of skill that is required at what time, mm -hmm. the level of it, yes. to be able to deliver that business decision that you have taken. And uh, Mr. Agbeto, just to be clear on this, we know that there's always a conflict with workers and management when it comes to HR, whose interest is being served. And at one point, it's, it's one thing, some workers may find that maybe HR management might say one thing to them and say another thing to the executives. I know it's a fine line that HR executives have to balance in That's terms right. of making sure both parties, um, their wishes are addressed. Exactly. How best can an um, HR management executive do this? Um, when you put people in the dark, then all kinds of suspicion mm -hmm. comes up. And as a result of that, it actually widens the gap between management and then the staff. So really going forward, it is all about communication, engaging, engaging employees. And this is done through proper communication. If you don't do that, then you leave the grapevine to thrive and yes. out of that confusion and problems. But is the communication also on the part of HR trying to also communicate the wishes of the workers? I, I don't know how best is, are they advocates for the workers sometimes? Can they in their role also take up the workers, you know, advocacy and try and make management understand? The role of the HR mm -hmm. is to ensure harmony yes. in the company. And therefore, um, it will require engaging both sides, management and then employees, ensuring that they're constantly interacting. There's a flow of information. Mm -hmm. uh, we engage them, they share their ideas, you know, with the management. And here again, the kind of culture that must ensure that it prevails is an environment where my opinion matters, mm -hmm. where I am head, yes. where I'm giving quite a bit of respect, you know, because every little thing that I add up helps to bring the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if that kind of culture prevails within an organization, then trust me, you can ensure that everybody in there feels owner of the company. Yes. I have a share. Mm -hmm. Because if it gets better, I stand to gain. Mm -hmm. If it goes down, I am losing out. And therefore, all hands get on deck and we can all achieve the bottom line. Okay. So it's about employee engagement. That mm -hmm. is the key. If you don't engage them, then naturally you leave room for people to begin to, you know, suspect things here. So transparency, you know, will flow out of constant engagement. Because mm -hmm. I feel like with some organizations, you might see that HR, to have that open door policy, it might be one thing to try your best to advocate for some of the workers. But when you go on the part of management, sometimes there is that, you know, hard line that, that must be adhered to. Mm -hmm. So how do executives, I know I've asked you before, I just want to get that answer, how exact, how best they can get both parties to agree on a common interest? You know, if, just, just go back to basis. Mm -hmm. If you're in the house mm -hmm. with your wife. Yes. And you hide you the man you hide your salaries if your wife comes and say buy me bentley obviously um uh, she feels she deserves it and you can afford it yes 
I with me. Mm -hmm. But if you bear it out, that this is my sorrow. So with that knowledge, I think the wife would never say, go and buy me a baby yes. if, when she knows that this income can never afford to purchase a, a Bentley. Mm -hmm. I with me. Mm -hmm. So transparency, management must bear it out. The old days of you know, covering and covering yes. and covering and then using that as a power tool to then pull people here and there and create a bit of division among staff mm -hmm. so that you think that will then prolong your stay. It's an archaic way of managing people. Transparency. This is this is the books. Mm -hmm. This is how much we are making. Yes. This is the cost implications. S look at it. Do you think we can afford it? Mm -hmm. You should, you know, look at the figures. So when these things are known to everybody really it makes it easier for you know certain misunderstanding to be easily settled yes and i think that's uh, that is exactly what that i i thought i needed to hear because Wonderful. in getting that transparency i think mm -hmm. workers can also relax a bit and understand what their company is about and the current state of their company absolutely so um when you say that um, you have a lot the western companies now have a, a positive image on Ghanaian companies because we kind of see what they're doing within their organizations. Mm -hmm. Can you mention some of the things they're actually bringing in and some of the challenges we currently have with Ghanaian organizations and how HR is structured? Um, uh, within, I wouldn't say all, yes. most of the traditional companies, uh, companies yeah. within the uh, Ghanaian um, community, uh, they still handled HR transactionally, mm -hmm. okay, which means they push the HR just to handle leave here and there instead of they being a strategic partner. When you talk about a strategic partner, you're talking about a HR specialist who is more or less so close to the chief executive mm -hmm. that every business decision that the chief executive comes out with, then the HR specialist will say, this particular decision requires certain number of skilled individuals as to when do we implement this business decision yes. do we have the skill set internally at the moment if we don't do we then go out and head hunt mm -hmm. and bring those skills set in here mm -hmm. if we do that how many of them do we bring in to come and do the training internally so this is what mm -hmm. the specialists will then come out and say so you're seeing the companies move away from the uh, management just directing each out to just go and do their bidding uh, Absolutely. But I come back and actually put some inputs. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. But so why why didn't we have this before? Like as uh, uh, creating the whole departments was to give a sense of well, we are actually now taking on people who can manage our workers. Mm -hmm. So why wasn't this there before? Um, rightly said. I mean, and even still prevails. Where I mean, people are brought in from all kinds parts of the department uh, of the organization, and then either they don't really like you or they can't find where to put you, then they'll throw you to HR and say, Go there, and then you know, just stay out of the way, mm -hmm. you know. And the person goes there, we just push papers, and that's it, just that's it. He weighs when the chief executive said, directs that sack that person, it's like he has no way of challenging the chief yes. executive. Quickly, he takes the paper and pen and write and dismiss somebody. Mm -hmm. And trust me, if you do that now, the person, all that he needs to do is to take you to Labor Commission mm -hmm. and you will be in serious trouble. Yes. And what happens is that when they are taken to the Labor Commission, the chief executive is never there. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the HR person who actually wrote the letter. Meanwhile, it was directed by the chief executive. Yes. But here we're saying that HR practitioners, if mm -hmm. you know your job, when the chief executive tells you to dismiss somebody, yes. say, hang on, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What is the policy? What is the procedure? Has he been given a warning letter before? If so, how long has that warning letter you know, been on his file? You know, there's a whole array of procedures that need to be respected. Yes, Mr. Alberto, but it sounds all well and good, but I'm sure not a lot of HR executives in Ghana today can actually, you know, have that mandate. Is is this something that is in Ghanaian law or is it within a company's own, you know, um, mission statement? Is this like... It's, 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 it's in the Labour Act. So it's actually it part is of there. the law. So and an you, HR executive can bring up these issues. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and you know, the problem is the fact that some of the so-called HR mm -hmm. are not that trained. Mm -hmm. So they are not even confident enough to stand up yes. to the chief executive and say, you are wrong. Mm -hmm. On this one, you are wrong. This is how to go about it. And if you know your stuff mm -hmm. and the chief executive is trying to push it, you, you say to him, I'm sorry, I will not do this. Yes.
because it then borders on my professional integrity mm -hmm. you must stand up to what is right yes don't just buckle you know because you want a salary at the end of the day then what are you made of and that is why this institute is there people must come and get trained and if you're trained and you have the skills on your fingertips mm -hmm. you know exactly what to do so um i think it's good you mentioned this because this would be a good segue to mention about how you collaborate with industry at this point to make sure because i'm sure you can offer your services to them that Absolutely. we are here we can actually train your personnel if mm -hmm. they are not trained already because mm -hmm. as you mentioned some people just happen to get hrs why don't you just go to hr mm -hmm. but it takes training and it's a professional skill absolutely it's a professional skill just like for you to be termed as an accountant you go through a professional training what do you call education mm -hmm. the same way for you to become an hr practitioner mm -hmm. you must go through a professional training program mm -hmm. and the institute of human resource management practitioners ghana mm -hmm. Is there to do exactly that okay and to do exactly that and one last question i want to squeeze in before i want to just ask your opinion on this because we know that in ghana a lot of the time we have issues challenges within our own organizations especially maybe in the public sector you could have um, issues of corruption of laziness of just having people in an organization that are free to do as they like mm -hmm. what exactly is hr how can hr help to curb this problem in such organizations you're talking in terms of the just um, people because we have in the public sector especially right. we have issues of mismanagement of funds people you know getting away with so much and how does HR factor into that how can how do they help or how do they you know stop that process you, you know it, it takes certain values and mm -hmm. principles to be able to stand firm against what is wrong mm -hmm. so you're talking about ethics mm -hmm. okay ethics if you as you come on the program we will teach you all that so that you know what is right and what is wrong mm -hmm. and we will also make sure that the policies within your company is fully written clearly mm -hmm. and is made available to every single employee mm -hmm. for us hr that is our sole responsibility mm -hmm. make sure your policies and procedures rules and regulations are written Yes. And they are written in such a way that everybody can understand. And they are made available. For me, that is key. Mm -hmm. Some, they have it, but they're sitting on people's tables. And then, as and when they feel, they will just put it out and look at it and look at your face and decide as to which one they apply to. Thank you. And I think to. that's mostly done in terms of discipline and employees. Absolutely. All of a sudden, the employee finds out, well, there was this uh, law in our organization uh -huh, you just broke. Uh -huh. But this is an interesting conversation. But yes. also, I think our time has run up. But we, I do understand that there's a center that um, the institute is opening up or there's a new program that you're um, ushering we, out. Yeah, we, we've been running the programs for years now. Mm -hmm. We run the professional certification program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is when you want to become a certified HR practitioner. Mm -hmm. It's got four levels, mm -hmm. one, two, three, and four. Um, we ran it from, November, uh, from August to December, and then we ran one from September through to um, January, mm -hmm. uh, to June. So please, if you are interested, just give us a call mm -hmm. on 0302 mm -hmm. or go on the website which is www.humanresource.org.gh. Mm -hmm. so, in addition to this, mm -hmm. we also run what we call continual professional education. Let's say we run two days program or three days program in performance management, uh, professional skills and training. these are for uh, executives already? Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. And then in addition to that, thirdly, lastly, we run what we call the professional um, uh, is it HR solutions? Yes. That means it's consultancy. So if you have any HR issue, you can approach us and we will be there to deal with it for you. So I think Mr. Abata said it all. Um, definitely some, it was a great conversation because I think HR is so important in exactly. the organizational structure. I'm part of a company myself, so I really wanted to hear what my HR can do for me. Yeah. And I'm sure the viewers who were ha quite happy to hear about that too. So we've been speaking to Mr. Ebenezer Agbeto. He's the executive director of the Institute of HR Management Practitioners right here in Ghana. We're going to take another short break and we'll be back with another interview. Stay tuned. Thank you so much, sir.